Amen. Great playing model. Thank you. Would you pray with me? God, as we come to your word, would you make us alive to it as it is alive to us? God, you've promised your spirit. Let it move freely. Let us not resist the enlivening work that you want to do among us this day. Take these bones and breathe your breath into them. And I'll talk to you soon. Friends, this morning we are beginning a little mini-series on the book of Galatians. Um, the book of Galatians is extremely important for Abbey Reformed Church. It's also really, really important for the Methodist Church just down the street. And also for, uh, for Cutting Community Church. And for Conduit. And for Erie First. It's important for, for all these churches and more. Because in the 1600s, a person named Martin Luther began to see something new. A way that the church, something the church had been seeming to miss about what it meant to be God's people. The Holy Spirit moved through Martin Luther and, and cracked open this whole new understanding. Well, it wasn't really new. But a fresh look at a reality of what it meant to be Christian that went on to transform not just what became known as the Protestant churches, but eventually came to totally reorder the Catholic Church as well. Here in the book of Galatians, Paul is laying out what it looks like, what it means to be God's people. What it means to be God's people in this new covenant, this new relationship that is here because of Jesus Christ, because of Christ's death, because of Christ's resurrection, and because of the gift of the Holy Spirit, there is a new covenant, a new relationship with God. And that is at the heart of what Paul is unfolding in the book of Galatians. It seems like just the right place for us as a church to spend a little bit of time this summer during the season of the Spirit. So would you listen with me to Galatians 3? Listen for the word of the Lord. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. And so then, the law was our guardian until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor nor free. There is no male and female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are in Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. If you are grateful, say thanks be to God. 
So this last vacation Bible school week, um, we had, you know, it was a, a packed house every night somewhere. I think, I don't know what the exact average was, somewhere around 120 kids every night, I think. Um, uh, over 100 adults. Um, and it reminded me, I, I was reflecting back on vacation Bible school from, uh, from my own childhood. Um, now, it wasn't quite as... Um, I don't know, ritzy, I guess you could say, is what we do here. We didn't have the same sort of ambiance and, and lights. But the one that I remember very clearly was we had, we had a, it was a, a camping theme. Um, and the, you know, this was before group publishing had their uh, you know, VBS in a box that makes things so, so handy. So this is something that we had you know, cobbled together, scrapped together from, from the church. Um, but there's some real similarities between that vacation Bible school and the one that we that we just went through, um, and that is um, well, neither one of them really got into Abraham very much. And you might think, I and mean, what's the big deal about that? I mean, Abraham is this great story from the Old Testament, but we can surely have vacation Bible school without. Get into Abraham, right? I think so, but I'm not so sure Paul would have agreed. At least the community that he was part of here would have found it very strange to have had um, an exposition of the gospel without talking about Abraham. See, see, Abraham. Abraham was the center of things. Abraham was the the start. Of things. See, this, this book right here that we call the Bible is the story of God's covenant people. The story of what God was doing, the conversations God was having with God's covenant people from the beginning until the present day. And then some. And in the story of God's people, you just can't get past Abraham. He can't get around Abraham. It was in Abraham that God made these foundational, fundamental promises about how the world was going to be set right. How the whole world was going to be blessed through Abraham's descendants. How one day Abraham's descendants would fill the world in the same way that the stars fill the sky, the way that sand covers the beaches. You can't get around God's promises to Abraham. So Paul knows this. Let's try this again. When you look at God's story about God's people, if you want to start at the beginning, you can't leave out God's promises were to Abraham. So then what about Jesus? Well, Paul originally was very uh, passionate against Jesus. He saw Jesus as this new upstart and those who followed him as this big threat to the promises that God made to Abraham. Paul's whole business was saying, was going around and, and, and doing whatever it took. Landing people in jail. Sitting and, and watching over the coats while other people, while his friends killed followers of Jesus. He did whatever it took. Paul wanted to make sure that nothing, nothing beat out God's promises to Abraham. Because this was the bedrock truth that they had always lived in. And then Jesus showed up to Paul. And Jesus himself showed Paul how, how Jesus was not replacing God's promise to Abraham. Jesus was God's promise to Abraham. In Jesus, all of God's promises to Abraham were coming true. 
And Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, moved in power and authority, preaching and teaching throughout the ancient world. And now, Paul has become, for the modern church, one of the most extensive and powerful voices explaining um, that, that, gets, that unfolds a theology, true Christian theology, that points to Jesus Christ as the answer, as the answer to all of God's promises to Abraham. But Paul faced some pushback, even within his own lifetime. We know this just from the last few weeks, or from our time in 2 Corinthians, but it's happening here too in Galatians. And, and here's what was happening in Galatians. See, there was this group of people that, that had a group of Christian of, of teachers that called themselves Christians that moved into to the church after Paul had left. And here's the basics of what they were saying. They were saying, yes, yeah, Jesus, Jesus is good. Jesus, Jesus is good. Jesus is God's Son, Jesus is Lord. And they said, but you still have to follow the rules if you want the promise. They said, yes, so Jesus, Jesus is, you know, um, we, Jesus is Lord, but, but you still have to follow, you still have to follow the rules. You still have to follow all of these, all the, all the rules in the Old Testament where God lays out what it, what it looks like to be God's people. You still have to follow those. See, on the way out of Egypt, God's people were given all of these rules by God. And God said, this is what it looks like to be my people. What it looks like to be my people, God says, is for one thing to follow the Ten Commandments. But there are lots more rules than that too. To be God's people means that you don't eat certain things. Right? You never, never, eat, never eat pork. Right? It, it also means, to, to be God's people um, meant to do absolutely no labor on the seventh day of the week, on the Sabbath. But there was one thing that rose um, to the top of importance over everything else. And this was a matter of circumcision. Here was the... Here was the whole everything summed up in one reality. To keep God's covenant, to live as God's people, meant for all to be circumcised, if you were a guy anyway. In fact, it was such a big deal that in the law, when God was saying what it's like to be God's people, he says that if anyone is not circumcised, then kick them out. It's a huge deal. And this is what, this is what these teachers were moving, were coming in and saying. They were saying, yeah, Jesus, Jesus is good and all that, but, but you still got to be circumcised. You still have to have this Mark, because this is what it looks like to be God's people. When push comes to shove, Jesus is good, but what it really looks like is to be circumcised. All right, so are we, are, we, are, we, are we clear on where we are right now in Galatians? Okay. And, and Paul, at this, in response to this, you might think that he would, he would just kind of say, well, you know, it's not really such a big deal. You don't really have to be, but, you know, if, if, you, you, know, if you want to think that, it's okay. Go ahead. You can just... No. Paul comes unglued. He says, no, 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 no. No, no, no. That, this, this doesn't have anything to do with it anymore. Paul says, because, because Christ brings a new creation. Because Christ brings a new creation. And in this new creation, all these old marks of what it means to be God's people, that's not, that's not what it comes down to anymore. 
What Paul says is that in Christ there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's not even slave or free. He says there's not even male and female. We're kind of thinking like, Paul, where are you going here? He says, all these things are, are made relative to the importance of being one in Christ. Now, Paul doesn't actually say male and female aren't real things. He doesn't say Jew and Gentile aren't real things. He doesn't say that, that slave and free are, just don't actually exist. He knows that these, that these things really exist in the real world. But what Paul is saying is that compared to the oneness in Christ, none of that matters. So, so, friends, here's something that I want to ask you today. What are the things for you, other than being one in Christ, that are essential for you to recognize a brother and sister in Christ? Now, the church has moved. We've come a long ways. <laughs> There's a, there are no big uh, controversies in the church right now over circumcision, right? But what does it mean? And, and I think Paul, Paul does something interesting here. I, I wish he had just left it at there's neither Jew nor Greek. Because that's really what he's been talking about this whole time. This whole, this whole controversy in the Galatian church is all about... Do you have to become a, a, a full Jew in your body in order to then become a Christian? Paul's answer is no. Seems like he could have just left it right there. But he doesn't. He keeps going. He says not only in Christ is there neither Jew nor Greek. He says there's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. Why did Paul keep on pushing that? I don't exactly know. But what it seems to me is that what God is doing in the new creation is bigger than what we had originally thought. What Paul says here is that what matters, what matters, is that now that faith has come, verse 25, we're no longer under a guardian. Now this guardian um, is basically another kind of a word for a babysitter, right? And Paul's image here is to say that, uh, that the law, all of these, all the rules in the Old Testament, Paul says, is basically like a babysitter. Like before, before you were old enough to, um, to survive on your own, before you were a real adult, Hey, we had to have a babysitter to kind of take care of you. But now Paul says, with, now that faith has come, you've grown up. And the babysitter doesn't make sense anymore. And frankly, Christians trying to live under the law doesn't look any better than an adult with a babysitter. Paul says, for in Christ Jesus you are all sons and daughters of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. So by the end, Paul loops back to the beginning with Abraham, saying that all of those promises that God made to Abraham are actually, they actually belong to everyone who's in Christ. All those promises belong to all those who are in Christ. And he 
wants to make sure that we know that that we resist tacking anything else on that we would actually trust other than Christ as we lean into this new creation. So here's the question. Do you want Jesus' new creation or are you more comfortable with some other marker of what it really means to be a Christian? The, the people that Paul was talking to had something they were very comfortable with, saying this decides who's in and who's out. Very cut and dried, forgive the pun. Paul says it's not the way it is anymore. But here's the thing. I want it to be more cut and dry than that. I have my things that I want to be able to say. If, if I see this in your life, nope. I have those things that I want to say. But when I listen to Paul, he says, no. No, you don't have that luxury. Here's your criterion. Is that person in Christ? If so, then they are part of the new creation. And they are your brother and your sister. Now that doesn't mean that someone who's a brother and sister, that automatically there's no, um, there's no correction, that doesn't mean that there's no, uh, there's no, that doesn't mean that that person can do no wrong or that you just have to go along with everything that person does. It's actually just the opposite. It means that when that person who is in Christ lives against the new creation. It's your, it's our responsibility. Not as, n not as someone carrying the big stick, but as, but the way that you would with a brother or a sister that you really love, say, look, it, this isn't, this isn't you. What's going on here? How, how can I come alongside you? How can we, how can we live in this new reality of the new creation in Christ? That's God's call to us. And it's no easier to do that with brothers and sisters in Christ than our own flesh and blood, blood brothers and sisters. We all know, let's be honest, we all know the challenges of family, especially when things are not going perfectly. This is no walk in the park, but this is the center, Paul says. This is the center. Paul says there's... there's there's nothing extra that we can add to name who's in and who out, who's out. It's only Christ and those who are in Christ. That's our starting point. Friends, so let's lean into it this way. Let's, let's lean into it that way with each other. All of us here in this room. Other Christians throughout Climber. Throughout the United States. Let's start here. The only place we can start that in Christ, all who are in Christ are one and part